Yeah. And we have uh, 45 to, um, what does it say in there? 45 to plus 35 pounds, to 50. 35 to 50 pounds per square inch pressure. So we have adequate pressure all over the town. So it's been that way forever, but we had our insurance, or not our insurance, but our uh, engineers come here and do the uh, graph. They did a graph, like a 24-hour uh, monitoring, like uh, vacuum does out there at the air vac for the vacuum sewers, and they got a pin on it, and the chart records the whole pressure all the time. So the report is going to be coming to us. To, it's it's uh, well. it, it, the report is going to be just a professional report, but we have plenty of water. But what they're doing out there, I don't know. So um, that's where we're at with that. So. Once we get the engineer here, maybe we could, uh, you know, if we have to, maybe try to accommodate it and pick more pressure up. I don't know, but uh, it's been that way for a long time, and we do have the pressure, so. Anything else? If not, we'll move to communications. Does anybody have anything for communications today? I do not. Burns, Mark? No. Brian, Chase? No. Okay, let's move on to uh, the public hearing. We have a uh, public hearing tonight for curbside recycling bids. So the uh, public hearing is now open. We do have one bid here. For the record, this bid is from, it says uh, Republic Service, which is a division of Key Waste, is that right? Key Waste is a division of Republic Service. Okay, so the bid is from Key Waste then, right? Okay. To uh, shorten it, is it on which page do you remember? The uh, last page. Sorry. The last page. Okay, the quote from, it would be from Key Waste, is uh, a three-year contract based on 225 homes in the town limits as requested in the bid specs with bi-weekly recyclable pickup. Republic would also place 96 gallon trash toters out in the town for 225 customers. The rates 2015 to start is $5.50 per month. 2016, a 4% increase, which would be $5.72 per month. 200, 2017, another 4% increase would be $5.95 per month. That is the bid. So at this time, we'll take it under advisement. Is that right? You can um, probably act on it if you want to because the Solid Waste Board, when we met last Wednesday, set the amount that we could afford to pay at $2.70. So that's slightly more than double that. So I think it's safe to say that while the solid waste district could adjust it a little bit upwards, we can't go $2.80 more a month. We just simply don't have the money. So at this time, uh, you, you've got here on the contract for uh, curbside collection that I have this paper up here for, right. and under uh, B, it does say the duty of the district. Does everybody have that? No. Nobody has that. I, no. I, I get one to Brian and one to you. So, <clears throat> when does the uh, council meet, or uh, the board, solid waste board meet again? It's like a it's month from now? December 20th. December 20th. And when does the actual contract expire? It's the December 31st. December 31st. 
What's your name back there? Bob. Bob. Bob Stone. Stone. Yeah. Do you have a uh, expiration date on this for the contract to be accepted if you have it in here? Is it no. so many? Okay. No, it's got the full ninety days. Oh, okay. So there's a ninety day in here. Okay. So at this time, we're just going to have to probably wait until the next meeting of solid waste. I mean, we, we can't accept it without the solid waste. So we're going to have to go back and see what we're going to do in the future, how we're going to handle this. How much more do we need to come up with? The, um, you said it was 270, right? Yes. So, so it's 550. So that's basically he can pay 270 and 550. It's 270, about two, well, it'd be 280. 280. We'd have to come up with two dollars and 80 cents, right? For, and then it's going to raise in four percent in 2016, and then raise in 2017 four percent. So it would be three dollars, roughly, three something. So it'd be 18 if we do a minimum of thousand homes. Dollar eighty more would be eight, eight, eighteen hundred dollars. There's two hundred twenty-five homes. No, no, no. no, no that's, that's incorrect. Rent. There's it's based on a minimum of a thousand. Oh, there's a thousand homes. It could actually be as many as three thousand in a month. So this is something that the council is going to have to look at in the future. If we uh, we've talked about it, you know, you can. What's There's the, a possibility of bidding trash and recycling if it comes down to it. What's the current rate we're paying for this year? Two dollars and fifty cents. Two fifty. And how many customers do we have now, uh, roughly? Averages probably just under fifteen hundred a month. Fifteen hundred a month. Comes out to about thousand four hundred seventy-seven over the last twelve months. Is the same company doing ours that's doing, say, Akron? Yes. Okay. I wonder if they're going to submit a bid for Akron. Key Waste was the only bidder in Akron. Key Waste was. Okay. Do you do Plymouth, Indiana? Yes. So you do it for Mayor Center? Yes. Trash and recycling? Yeah, you'll get to recycle. If you bid trash and recycle out together, you will get a lot better deal than you will just bid not to recycle alone. I know a lot of cities, they do bid it out for the trash. Mayor Terry McDonald, you know him from New Haven. They bid it out, and they also, um, you know, the uh, trash hauler bills the people direct too. So I know we talked about that before, Andy. But <coughs> they even they do it with their contractor there somehow. They do it. Uh, they just they bid it out, and I know Mayor Center changed that in Plymouth to five years uh, ago. Right when he first came in office, and that was his first uh, challenge there. He did away with the trash trucks and the department and contracted with you guys who won the bid for the contract so that's something that um, we do it a little differently because we use carts for all homes it just makes it look a lot nicer a lot neater and we don't do any alley pickup uh, because they put it in the alley people have a tendency to just throw it out where it is it is if it's on the street in front of their house where all their neighbors see it they try to keep it cleaned up and not to put you on the spot but do you approximately know the uh, Rate right up there when you do both the uh, I know I get it from center but when for trash and different because of the things that they added in mm -hmm. uh, it just depends on how you write your bid specs it could be anywhere from uh, twelve about twelve and a half dollars a month on up to fifteen and a half dollars a month depending on how you write your specs you know what you want done you want containers for a town cleanup uh, once a year twice a year. Uh, you want containers and all the town-owned businesses, you like town hall stuff, or you just want toters. You know, just how you write it will determine all that. So that is that counting the recycling both for yes. $15 a month? Yeah, that's trash and recycling. For a month. So what do we pay here by independent contractors? We got five or six mm -hmm. contractors running up and down the streets every day, busting up our streets. And yeah, my bills know. are anyway from $25 to $40 a month, not counting recycling. So when you contract it out, then you get the one person wins the whole contract, but he also gives everybody a break because you get a better rate usually right. for the whole city. Hmm. That's a big difference. Yes, plus, plus recycling. So, 
I think it's something that we need to uh, address as the council mm -hmm. to, yeah, we, to we got till the first of the year to decide what we need to do you know it's not that far away and then you'd open the bids up to any trash haulers that want to do both trash and recycle together right open it all up hmm. <clears throat> a lot of cities do it I mean a lot of cities used to provide the trash in their water bill but then some cities like New Haven, they still do it and contract it. I don't know who does it. Does Key Waste do New Haven over by Fort Wayne? Uh, we might. I think Serval might do New Haven. I know they do Fort Wayne itself. So I think they do do New Haven too. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know, but I can find out who who does it. But yeah, you, the rates will vary depending if you know if each person in town has to be billed independently then the rates vary because you're gonna have a lot of people who won't pay their bills and they have to count that in it. Where if you add it into the water bill, like probably 90% of the towns do that. And then when they add it in, they also add a little bit in for their administration fees. So you get it for $14 a home, they charge everybody in town 15, so they've got a little bit of money to help cover their administration fee for handling it. I like it better if the contractor does the own billing and he doesn't have to run through you, you know, I mean, in the clerk's office, because um, Mayor McDonald does it that way. I'll have to get with Mayor McDonald and see how, he, how they did it. But I know Andy and I said that we talked about it before and we didn't know if we could do that, but Mayor McDonald doesn't bill it through the city, so, in New Haven, so. Doing it like that, you're probably talking another probably 2 to $3 a home on top of that, where each one has to get billed independently. Right. But that's still a lot better than when I pay my trash bill now. I don't know what everybody else pays, but it's still, uh, you know, something that needs to look at. Yeah, the only problem you run, <clears throat> excuse me, the only problem you run into with that is if this person doesn't pay their bill and you quit picking their trash up because they're not paying it. If they're on Main Street, you've got all this trash piled up on Main Street, and it, once a while that presents a little bit of a problem. That's then the that could, we'd have now. Though. Yeah, that'd be coming back to reflect where the city police would probably give a citation, and then we'd pick it up, and we'd do a hundred dollar an hour pickup for us, and put a lien on the property. I would assume that's how that would work, probably Andy, if we went that way. But uh, but this is something that's anybody else have any mm -hmm. thought on this? Burns, well, you got anything? You think on that? You know, I, some people just don't recycle. Right. And, uh, so they're going to pay for it anyhow, but they just don't recycle. Right. I don't have enough to recycle anything. Right. We recycle quite a bit. So, Doug, if we don't, I mean, right now in the short term, it looks like we can't fund this. Will city residents still be able to bring stuff into the, oh, sure. the center on their own? Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> so that's another option then, too. Because we operated for a long time without having curbside. But there's no doubt, just with conversations I've had with a lot of people that use the curbside program, we're going to lose at least half of our recyclers mm -hmm. without having. But that's also pretty typical. Uh, places where they've discontinued curbside, that's always what happens. There's a lot of people that are not willing to take it somewhere. I don't curbside, but I go to the place. But okay. a lot of my neighbors do, and on a windy day, I end up getting <laughs> yeah, little make cartons and trip. cereal boxes in my yard, so no, I, I take them later. You, you, you throw them out the window. Huh, you? <clears throat> well, even even if you, like you said, Burns, if you don't use the system, no. but the price that we get wouldn't matter if they use it or not because the amount of trash per month would be a lot less money. I mean, I don't know who, you know, I'm not mentioning names, but I know I'm all over the board. My cheapest bill is twenty four seventy five, and one's $40 a month for different haulers. So I don't know what you pay, but, you know, no names need 20. to mention, but, yeah. you know, I mean, when you start looking at that, it doesn't matter if you'd recycle or not. You could still have the toter, and you might promote it to go green, too, mm -hmm. as far as you know, doing the recycling. So, I mean, it'd be a promotion there, but of course a lot of people aren't gonna do it anyway. But the nice thing about it, you don't have to, uh, 
baskets that blow all over your neighbor's yard. You've got regular toters in Plymouth, just like the toters you use for trash. One's for recyclables and one's for garbage. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, we, either, we have a few options. I mean, we either have to try to come up with the money for continued curbside, explore the option the mayor wants, or just get rid of it altogether. You know, I, I don't know where we're going to get the money. You know, I mean, you know, we don't have anything budgeted for that. Have but, to come out of rainy day, I'm guessing. but, yeah, I mean, I don't think that's what I would be against taking rainy day money out. To, it would only fund it for a short period of time. I mean, I haven't done the math, but when you do the math there. $5,400 a year. How much? $5,400 a year. If they're not going to be Dollar eighty. It's two eighty. Based on it, that was two eighty. Two eighty. Two eighty. Per month. <clears throat> per That'd be per month. month. Yeah. It's a thousand fifteen hundred customers per month. Well, and he and said it can fluctuate between a thousand and three thousand. Yeah. Right. So the minimum would be uh, five thousand a month. A month. Yeah. And then the maximum would yeah. be up to three thousand per so month. You know, we're so looking if you at do five thousand a month, sixty grand a year. Sixty. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's five thousand. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. sixty hundred grand a year. So. I mean, you come to this kind of money, that's where you'd want to bid it out if we're going to make that move. There's two options. I know it's not popular, but, you know, how many trash trucks go up and down the streets? Too many. Every day. At so least you pick up how many times in Plymouth? One, once a week in a neighborhood. <clears throat> in each neighborhood, yeah, once a week. So, uh, one trash, one recycle on the same days. And you're the only contractor that is allowed to do the trash service since you won the bid. Yes. So one one trash truck in your neighborhood versus a week versus six. we probably have eight. That would help Manitowoc Heights. I, I know five for sure. <laughs> they can opt out. Was that? They can opt out. I would think it'd give people the the incentive to recycle. Right. 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 For, it's for, it's for Can you talk up for the meeting there, Doug, if you're talking so everybody can hear? Was that, uh, did you ask him if he, people could opt out? I was told by the clerk in Plymouth that, and granted, she's relatively new at the job, but she told me that people can opt out, that they have to come in and show that they have a, a private hauler collecting their trucks, like show them a bill or something. and then they won't charge them on the water bill. But I was talking to Bob about it, and he said that he doesn't think that's correct. Yeah, I don't think that's true either. I mean, I'm talking to Center. I think Center just contracted it through the whole city, but it, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Right. It might be one or two, but, yeah. where but it's... You, where would those recyclables go? Yeah, say, if you we set up here what they have in Plymouth, would you take them to our local? No, they go back to our shop, and then from our shop, depending on what it is, uh, it may go to Chicago, it may go to South Bend, just depending on the market at the time. Okay. So part of it goes diversified, part of it goes up to Recycle Works, it just depends on the uh, market at the time. Well, I think uh, for the city, I mean, maybe we should uh, get a committee to evaluate this, maybe get a few council members on it so we don't have a quorum and check into this and is this something if we went that route under a recyclable and trash pickup would that be an ordinance that would have to be passed or is that just something that i suspect where the ordinance comes into it is in the, in the extent to which you prohibit other haulers in mm -hmm. other words there's uh, the city saying uh, we're no longer provide this, we're going to provide this service and we're going to hire someone to do it. I think that's the easy part. The hard part is if you're going to, if you're going to create a monopoly to the, to the contractor that gets the, the contract, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you lawfully prevent uh, you know, Joe Smith from saying, I, you know, I, want to, I want to use this guy for my trash mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, that's probably the, the main thrust of having the ordinance. Yeah. We do have a trash haul ordinance. I don't recall what it says, but we do have one. <laughs> that might be where we look first for a minute. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not really a monopoly. <clears throat> they don't prohibit other haulers, actually. Uh, you know, everybody that's residential in the town, 
is contracted with this one hauler. Now, if you've got commercial businesses, uh, things like that, that want a different hauler, they're not contracted with it. They can use whatever hauler they want. For the dumpsters. So, yeah, it's just, this just strictly is on the residential side. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I, I'll get with Mayor Haven, uh, Mayor uh, McDonald at New Haven, but uh, does anybody want to pursue this and check it out, or what's everybody's intention? I mean, that's just an option to... I think something's going to be, need to be done eventually. <clears throat> I mean, we, it depends if we want to save curbside recycling. I mean, that's basically where we're at. Right. And, I mean, it's, I don't know how much money is going to, you know, the, the tipping fee keeps going down. I mean, you see that, Chase, here on the board. I mean, it yeah. goes down. We're not getting near what we used to get. But well, it's actually not going down now. It's pretty stable. It's holding its, its own. It's less than we used to get. Yeah. But are we still... Our expenses are more exceeding what we're bringing in every month. Vastly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So I mean, our equity, our reserves are going down every month. They are. Even though we've we're still got a few years to operate, I'm sure. But we got 90 days, do we not? Yes. Well, why don't we look into it? Yeah, we have 90 days with this bid. Right. Curbside stops end of the year. December, January 1st. So I know. 30 days. What would be the timeline to do this if we put it out for a bid? I mean, just depends I mean, on the existing contracts and, and what your obligations are to those, mm -hmm. if any. I mean, there's no the public hearing would be you have to advertise it so long for a public bid. I think so. Is it 45 days? I don't think it's that long. I think it's only because it's a. I don't know if there's a difference between a contract and service and the public bid option and if we were just purchasing something. So if we're just purchasing something, it's usually 10 to 15 days that we have to advertise prior to the public hearing. Um, if it's a serviced contract or contract such as this, yeah. it may be a little different. So we may have to. I, I, I don't think it's likely you're going to get an all-in-one uh, uh, bidding and contract and, and all that in place before January. Right, yeah. I, I think that's unlikely. Okay. You're going to give your college enough time to yeah. get together their numbers. Well, we'll just. Well, well if that's the case, uh, then we'll probably just stop the curbside for a couple months. For a couple months and yeah. take the time to look at this right and completely. Yeah. Because yeah, if that's something we yeah. want to explore, we don't want to be accepting a bid for curbside because that locks us in for a year. Yeah. Right. Three right. Years. Three, three years. Three years. Three years. Three years. No, three years. Yeah. If so. you if you were to okay that, I mean actually award that, we're paying for one year. So if you do that, the city's going to be on the hook for the second and third year. Right. So even if they came in at the two dollars and seventy cents. Yes. Even if they came in at the two dollars and seventy cents. Yeah. Well, I think we uh, need to get some more information on this. And <clears throat> well, what action do we need to take on the bid? Any anything? Under advisement. I don't think I don't think you need to take any action on it. Okay. Just take it under advisement, and we'll. Uh, I thank you for bidding on it, and we'll just have to, you know, I guess it's marketing 101 to look at your services here, but uh, we need to do something, so we're going to have to look into this further to see what we can work out. Yeah. If you're going to, yeah. if you're anticipating bidding out everything trash and recycled, uh, I wouldn't accept it because if you do. You know, that's going to mess that up for you. Mm -hmm. You mean you wouldn't accept what? Uh, accept the second bid. Oh, no, 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 no. We'd have to rebid the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 right. I'm with you there. Yeah. No, we're not. I think that's something that we're going to have to look at doing how we're going to do this. I think a bid and recycle is the thing that we're going to have to really investigate a lot, a lot further, deeper because mm -hmm. it sounds like the most logical way to go. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not popular, but somebody everybody's got the chance to bid it you know i mean it's a contracting job but i know that when i mentioned this before i got about two phone calls real quick about it so by individual contractors but it's something that um for the not only for the citizens for the trash bill and recycling but also our streets and alleys and the trucks out there at mantona heights are 
done a lot of damage to probably That's our true. sewers out there too. I mean, over the period of time, so there's more to it than just picking up trash as far as wear and tear on our streets. So, and the uh, safety of kids running around too with yep. big trucks running up and down residential neighborhoods. So, you know, there's a lot of things you could start looking at the pros and cons. So, yeah, that's your number one priority: safety. Yeah, exactly, and that's the key so I guess we'll just check into it and take this under advisement this time thank you thank you thank you gentlemen. okay um, anything else from the council members no, thank you. <clears throat> any other uh, well we'll close the public hearing then if unless there's anybody from the audience that wants to say anything more okay public hearing is now closed for curbside recycling bids we'll move on to communications does anybody have any communications okay um, let's move on to uh, police reports uh, chief shots <coughs> Good evening. My name is Andy Schatz. Um, you gentlemen have the monthly reports for October. Uh, as you can see, we had 15 total accidents, with one being a personal injury accident. 142 warnings were issued. Eight of those were for city ordinances. Uh, total offenses were 62, with 21 being traffic, 39 criminal, and two juvenile. Uh, total case reports for the month was 46. We had 774 calls for service, 39 lockouts, five towed vehicles, and 20 people incarcerated. And then you'll see I also included what uh, the crimes that people were lodged for, if you have any questions on those. Kind of ran the gamut this month, or last yeah, month. You, did. <clears throat> you don't have to fill every category in. With I'm not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a page two. Do you guys have any questions about the the monthly report? And then I'll give. Okay. Yeah, we talked about the ordinance here. Does everybody have? I sent everybody an email. Shada, you have an email from uh, Andy on this ordinance for uh, the parking. Yes. And I want to know where on Monroe 12th Street is. 12th, 12th Monroe? 12th and Monroe. Yeah, going off of Monroe, and I want that. Yeah, it has to, it has to go east and west. Right? What? 12th Monroe? Street. 12th, 12th Street. Monroe is J.C. Park. Is J.C. Park. No. It's between 9th and 9th, 12th. I, I'm sorry. Monroe yeah. running Monroe between ninth and twelfth. I said I said yeah. Ninth and twelfth. Monroe between ninth and twelfth. Yeah. Yeah, the three blocks. But eleventh, twelfth. That's the JC Park. Right at JC Park. Twelfth. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ninth Street to Twelfth Street there, where it's all congested. On yeah, I, I know where Ninth Street is. I, I'm, I'm concerned about Twelfth Street. Uh, I li I live on the corner of Eleventh and Madison. You live on Fifteenth no, and Madison. Uh, uh, is it is it Fifteenth? No, they took the sign down. <laughs> What's your address? <laughs> it's Sixteen, and I get the county Twelfth. And I lost track of two, two streets. <laughs> okay, I'm with you now. God, you had me I got I got lost. I think you, you got us lost uh, too. Would someone direct me home? <laughs> I had me worried there. Yeah. Well, you got me worried too. Um, I know. Well, we talked about in the fourteen. We, we talked about going some to more streets don't go mm -hmm. through. Andy did both of them, but oh, Andy Perkins. I mean, there's two Andys here. So. Right. We talked about extending it, uh, no parking on Monroe from 9th to 14th. 
Um, to keep it consistent, it's going to be no parking on the east side since it's on the east side of town. Uh, that's going to force uh, people in the 1200 block of Monroe to park right up against the park. And I don't know that we want to do that. Um, so that's why we had it both ways drafted, but I think if we stop it at 12th Street, because right there in the 13 and 14, I'm sorry, the 12 and 1300 block of Monroe, it's not too bad. Um, but Chase, I know you know how bad it was last winter oh, yeah. uh, between 9th and, and 12th Street uh, with parking on both sides, and then that snow just makes that road even more narrow. Um, and then the other street, another street was Fulton Avenue between 5th and 6th, and that's mainly for the buses. And then Clay Street between 3rd and 4th, right there in front of Riddle School. Uh, the problem we're having there is school lets out at 2.45, 3 o'clock, whatever it is, and people start lining up at 1.30 to pick up their kids. And they're parking double, double parking, taking up the entire road. So we can't get an emergency vehicle if anything were to happen. And it's, it's preventable if we just keep no parking. And right there, I know Andy said that we have no parking on the west side of clay down farther but if we do we, we want to i think we want to keep them off the east side of the road because on the west side it's all parking lots in front of the school so that's not going to do any good anyway um, no one it wouldn't be reasonable to put no parking on the west side when all of its parking spaces well they want to keep the traffic moving skeeter we need uh, a, 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 at least a lane of, a lane to, to get through and get in there, your grid lock. You can't go. Yeah, and I drove by today at uh, about 2:45, and it's like it's like the Indy 500. They're getting ready for the green flag to drop, and they're parking too too wide across the street, and there's not a lane to, to go through if something were to happen. Um, and even if it's you know an emergency vehicle trying to cut through over to to get to Third Street out to the fairgrounds or 31 or something, it's you're gonna have to go around them because it's gridlocked right there for at least an hour um, so I think if we put no parking on the east side keep them off that side street that way at least there's or off that side it's going to keep one lane open and it might make the long the line a little bit longer and somebody might have to get there a little bit earlier to be first in line but um, so those are the three that are proposed right now and and I don't know what your guys' thoughts are about the the Monroe between 12th and 14th, um, but Andy, you did both of them. That that's we talked after mm -hmm. you did the first one, but then we did them both, so 14th. we talked about it, and we didn't put the one ways on yet mm -hmm. because talking to a few of the council members and then Terry Lee with everything that's going on, I just feel that with sidewalks and school and. The winter's coming up now, and we're working with downtown Main Street program. And I had several calls about local businesses that are on there that didn't like us talking about changing it. One was a Dr. Boldry's office parking okay. there. So I just think uh, talking, I think it just needs a little bit more evaluation. And we can talk to Andy Perkins, our attorney, that we can always amend it once we get that to have a plan and talking to Terry Lee we've got about six months maybe before we're really looking for that plan or yeah I, some of the plans for the redevelopment commission include one side parking uh, specifically on uh, Madison Jefferson and then some of the cross streets 6th and 8th and 11th and 13th but that's really all we've looked at so far and we're just starting to look at that so, I mean, I, I, I mean, if you have emergency reasons for doing it, then we don't want to get in the way of, of access and that kind of thing at, at all or hold anything up, you know, where you need, you know, something right away. Um, but, yeah, we're looking at ways to take some of the one-way, basically extending the one-way streets, having parking on one side, and then basically bike lanes and so forth on the other side. So, and that's the Redevelopment Commission project, and then, for the Safe Routes to School grant that the city has, we're looking at all the city streets, including close to the schools, and what's the best way to get kids
kids to school, you know, by walking and biking and stuff like that, instead of, you know, more traffic congestion and those kind of things. And so we'll be looking at different ways to, uh, to route students to school that, that may cross over you know, sure. some of the parking on one side issues. But yeah, I mean, the Safe Routes group meets um, the second? Tuesday, correct. Yeah, next Tuesday to just start with our consultant on the planning and looking and everything. So yeah, it's probably going to be another probably two or three months before we feel like we have all of it looked at in its entirety. And what we're, what we're doing is looking at the streets that Brian sent me on what you guys are considering for parking on one side and considering that and trying to take it into account with our overall comprehensive planning for streetscapes and access to schools and, and neighborhoods and stuff like that. But as far as from the emergency side or I think side, with all the snow we had last year, and I think that's why we want to kind of get this addressed now so we don't have to have to run into the same problem we did last year with the snow on Monroe Street. And it was really, we had a lot of complaints last year, I remember, on Monroe. And I just don't want to move forward and and then have to do it all again. I think we just, I mean, I think it needs to be done one time when we do it. And and so I think the emergency now is the, the snow removal that we started with. Um, I think John, you the snow removal this, change. Well, the snow removal and parking, no and parking, parking in those two yeah, areas. Parking, I've been after yeah. the parking deal for a couple of years now. Right. I'd like to see the parking you know, as, as safety factor. Mm -hmm. Chief Butler, I've talked to him yeah. many times. I call him and ask him. I said, Chief, you know, see if you can get, take your car, drive down through, and tell me you can get a fire truck down there. Yep. He calls you back and goes, there ain't no way. Yeah, and the other one I am concerned about is Elm Street um, between 10th and 12th. But no one, no one in those two blocks, I don't think, has off street parking. So if we were to, if we were to go no parking on one side of the street there, it's, it's going to jam pack the other side and there's going to be fights over parking spaces. And I don't want that to happen. Um, I don't think it was a real issue last year, but it does get narrow. I think that's where we need to do that, uh, enforce our ordinance, park on one side at that point. You know, we have the ordinance that if you have a lot of snow that you're supposed to park on the even or odd. I don't know what that yeah. is. We yeah, we do have that in place already. So. And, and then Elm Street, if we get the neighborhood to buy into that which that would help a lot too mm -hmm. is get one side of the street clean mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. when you have to go around the cars door. it's just it just gets worse and well, the street gets skinny. You know. yeah yep. yeah it's exactly. getting, and now we have those signs did we get those signs in more the snow or no signs I, I we just talked because about we that were put those up at the same time we, yeah as we were putting these parking on Warren exactly. went out around yesterday to look and see how the sign said where no parking was because I, I wanted to kind of match them the same way we got them in different areas of the city and then get with Andy so it won't take too long to get them but we're gonna we're gonna put two I think in each block you think that'd be enough it should be you know yeah. that's what we figured well, like on too. Monroe and on each, Fulton, uh, what we're block. talking about I would think so um, this like the, the street department know more about that than I would but right. I think typically that's what happens is there's two in each block. Mm -hmm. So are there in the works right now as we speak? Okay. So and we'll definitely order, advertise. We're assuming this will get passed as well. When the snow does start coming, we'll advertise right. on the radio and in the paper uh, with the ordinance for snow removal. And I've also gotten some complaints about parking too close to um, intersections and and stop signs and stuff. So I'm going to do something in the paper about that also. So do you need a copy of the, I guess the first question I'm going to ask, the copy of the ordinance that Andy created, if we're looking at 9th to 12th on the row, or if you want 9th to 14th? They have the 9th to 12th. We have, yeah, the 9th to 12th. I sent everybody a copy of the 9th to 12th, and then we changed it on the, the 14th. but. Um, I mean, I, I rely on Andy's expertise there as a chief, what he recommends. And, I, I think to 12th Street would be sufficient. I, I really do. Um, between 12th and 14th has never really been a big issue. Um, but I know, like I said, for consistency, a lot of streets, well, some of the streets do continue to 14th Street. But I just, I, I, 
I think we'll be safe to go into 12th Street and stopping it there. Because the JC Park takes up most of that area. Right it's there. a quarter, uh, half the block, yeah. So we either uh, look at this now while we're talking about it. I mean, it's on the bottom of the agenda, or we can come back to it, whichever one you want to do. Since you want to go ahead and do it now, since we've got it here in front of us. I think so. Yeah. All right. And then what would be the number on this? Uh, twelve. This is twelve. Because mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if it would be raised, oh. so I did not include it down at the bottom. I put a question mark. Okay, so it is twelve. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see that. Okay, so this would be twelve. Well, then I would entertain a motion to um, read ordinance number 12-2014 by title only, first time. So moved. Second. All in favor to read ordinance number 12-2014, excuse me. Okay, 6-0. Okay, Brian. Yeah, you can Ordinance number 12-2014, an ordinance amending the parking code. Okay, now I would entertain a motion to read ordinance number 12-2014, probably in its entirety since it's not very long. So moved. Second. All right, all in favor? You please read that sure. in its entirety. <clears throat> ordinance number 12-2014, an ordinance amending the parking code. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester has determined that certain portions of the city's parking regulations should be amended. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Rochester that Chapter 76, Schedule 1, entitled No Parking Zones, be amended to include the following language to the prohibitions under Subpart A. Additions are indicated in bold and redacted language in strikeout. Monroe Street, between 8th Street and 9th Street, also between 9th Street and 12th Street, east side. Fulton Avenue, between 5th Street and 6th Street, west side. Clay, 3rd Street to 4th Street, east side. All portions of Schedule 1 not regulating Monroe, Fulton, and Clay Streets remain unchanged, passed by the Common Council of Rochester, Indiana. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, I would take a, entertain a motion to read the ordinance number 12-2014 to amend the parking co code by title only. So moved. Second. All in favor? Ordinance number 12-2014, ordinance amending the parking code. Okay, I will entertain a motion to make passage ordinance number 12-2014 for a vote on the amending the parking code. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor to pass ordinance number 12-2014 to amend the parking code? Say aye. aye. Okay. Passes six zero. Okay, um, let's move back to. Uh, I know we've got a few things here, but Casey, you uh, have here for the uh, building here, and then we'll move to. Oh well, I, I think you're done, aren't you? I'm just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> I assume I'm <laughs> Thank you, Chief. <laughs> 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 Do you have a comment too, or afterwards? Uh, I guess I'm on the agenda for redevelopment commission. Okay. So I think everything I've got is for that. Okay. Thank you. Casey? This would be uh, the update for um, the old Bailey building. Um, you guys have, you guys had decided to give him three months, I believe, the last time he was here. I gave you a set of pictures. One was from June um, June 24th, and then the other set is from today. Just so that you could um, kind of see the difference, we have had a couple reports from the neighbors that they hear the bricks falling on the roof, which they obviously have to go somewhere. They're not staying on the wall. So. 
I think at this point it's really kind of in the city council's hands and your attorneys as far as exactly what you want to do. I have not heard from Mr. Abbott um, as far as any plans. I know the last time he spoke to you, he said he was purchasing scaffolding to fix it um, himself, I believe. But there has not been, from what I can see from the photos and stuff, nothing has been fixed. Oh boy. <clears throat> I assume there's no scaffolding there either. This picture is literally taken this after, this morning. Yeah. Now there may be scaffold inside. I don't know that. Was he aware of the meeting tonight? Was he gonna but you haven't talked to him, have you? I have not so spoke to him and actually I believe the update was actually supposed to happen last month. Mm -hmm. Um and it slipped my mind because I was out for my back surgery at the time and Shot and I just happened to be having a conversation and I was like, oh wow, so. This was originally brought up last year, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It started last year, you guys, I think gave him a year uh, to do repairs. And at that time the holes were much smaller. Um, and then in June it came back to you. And I believe that's when you told them to have it done by October. by November 1st, which would have been your October meeting. I think that's what it was. Would you uh, advise us all as to what our options are, please, Casey? I believe your options would be um, to demolish the building. I mean, you could do that, put a lien on the property. Uh, you could, I believe, fix it. Uh, and again, put a lien against the property. I think that's pretty much it at this point. Andy would have a better knowledge of that than I would. Uh, you can you can affirm the order, and before we demolish it uh, or set foot to improve it, you you want an order from the court in that proceeding. But basically, mm -hmm. if you if you affirm the order, I would file a complaint on the unsafe building ordinance and uh, uh, seek a, a penalty and judgment against him, and seek an order from the court giving you permission to enter the property to do whatever you deem necessary to bring it up to specs. For some that's launching it, for some it's not. Mm -hmm. um, and, and authorizing any of those costs you incur to both go against the judgment and go against the uh, uh, taxes for the property. What if there is a, a lien holder, or like a mortgage company that... Lien, any, the first thing I do is I, I get a title search mm -hmm. and, and name any lien holder as a, as a defendant uh, uh, for the purpose of giving them notice of the proceeding. Mm -hmm. If there is a, uh, a, and if there is an active mortgage, that's gonna get their attention pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, norm, most of these properties, that's not the case. I would say most of them I filed, there's not a mortgage, current mortgage on it. But, um, but if there is, I mean, they probably wanna make sure their collateral is yeah. in good shape. So if we do this, then uh, does our lien take priority over another lien, or are we just in line? No. Well, you, you, it depends which lien you're referring to. Like uh, if we fixed it, say if you if, went in there and if, fixed it. If you fix it, uh, you do have an argument that the cost of fixing it would come even ahead of the mortgagee because you can collect those as, as taxes are collected, okay? Uh, the, the judgment for the penalty you get against the, the landowner does not come ahead of a, a mortgage. Okay. Well, I'm just thinking out loud. It almost looks like you could skin it and put metal siding on it, you know, to to, to a point. But I mean, I'm just thinking out loud to about less than re tuck point in the whole building, you know, to preserve it from getting more water in here. I mean, that's I, I don't know if that's even feasible, you know. Well, you, you could attach it to it. Well, you'd have to. Uh, you'd have to. Uh, well, I think one of the biggest concerns I know through my office is the freeze and thaw this winter. I'm sorry? One of the biggest concerns through my office is just the freeze and thaw this winter. It was, right. that was our biggest concern last year. But we're here. And we're here now and it is worse. Um, and it's just going to keep getting worse. You can even see 
physically some of the bricks and especially this first picture you can see them turned um, you know the mortar just has dissolved yeah, that's the thing you <laughs> down on the lower part. Did he happen to get a quote yeah. for that before? Right? There, yeah. I thought at one point when he spoke to you, he had said he'd talked to a contractor. Which one? I'm not sure. I, I don't know if he had three estimates. I, I've never seen any. But I know he, he said he had spoke to a contractor about the cost. If we were going to do something like that to salvage the building, of course, once we would have to, we would have, to have somebody going to give us an idea of options of safely fixing it so it doesn't crumble mm -hmm. uh, compared to the demolition I try to see it be demolished but you know what we don't know is the other structural problems that are going on with the building on internally okay. uh, in the roof <coughs> we don't know uh, the flooring well, I think I'm looking at this and I'm thinking you know that, that that's all wood floor it's, I mean granted it's old and native timber and everything mm -hmm. but I'm looking at the you know there's been a lot of exposure you know, it, it's been a while since I went in I think that was when he was originally contacted mm -hmm. I went and went upstairs and I didn't see a whole lot of damage at that point but again it's been a year mm -hmm. at least to the inside um, you know I think if we <coughs> affirm the order and Andy sends out the notice and does a lean search problem may find a quicker solution if there is a mortgage company on it. Yeah, I would, I would probably, uh, if I found that, give a heads up to the mortgage company and say, by the way, I'm, I'm drafting this complaint, um, mm -hmm. and uh, if there's action on it very promptly, uh, someone, someone from the city might tell me to back off before the complaint gets filed. You know, if I found an active mortgage on it, that might be something. Well, one thing's for sure, we were talking about this a year ago. That's exactly right. So, yeah. Yeah. if we don't do any action, we'll be talking about it again next year and saying it's still cold and it's getting worse. And, you know, I think it needs to be addressed through Andy to file whatever we need to do for, sure. for the paperwork. And the good part about The good part about doing the paperwork now is that obviously it is getting colder and it's winter. It's very difficult to do tuck point work at this stage of the year. But Andy has um, ample time now to do the paperwork, get it through the courts, talk to the mortgagee if there is one. You know, and at this point, it's not as if you're wasting daylight, so to speak. You know, you're not wasting your summer months. You know, when there could be work being done. So, you know, depending on what happens, you know, hopefully there would be an amicable solution before spring, and everything will get taken care of. But either way, the paperwork would be done by spring, and you'd be ready to go if you had to. Because it's going to be less expensive if we do have to act on it quicker than later because it's going to keep getting worse. Oh, mm -hmm. agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess we need to uh, entertain a motion to proceed to. To affirm it. To, per, pardon me? Affirm it. Affirm it. To let Andy go ahead and file the proper paperwork, because it's not getting done. We're here again a year later, and we're still going to have to address the issue. So, and what, what was the wording before when we talked to him? You know, when we did grant him, yeah. I believe it was at the June meeting. I'd have to pull the minutes, but I'm pretty sure I documented in the minutes um, that you guys had because you were wavering on whether to giving three four months, six, you know, how far to take it out before winter. But I believe at that time you granted him an extension through either to the October or November meeting. Um, and at that point he said he would have some scaffolding to try to get some repairs done. Yeah, I remember he said he was buying a piece at a time. So basically he just continued the, uh, I believe that was the proper terminology, was that you continued the hearing to revisit for this meeting. means now you can take action it I think we just need to make a motion and let Andy do the research is my suggestion to the council so I'm going to make a motion and, and proceed as and then that way if we get to that point when it's nice weather we can have a contractor come and if we have to get an estimate to fix it it's 
you know, it's at the point now, I think, like you say, John, I, I think upstairs, I, that's where you had the archery range. And it, it seemed like, it was, I haven't been up there for a while, but I, it's going to get worse if it doesn't get fixed. So I'd hate to see the, the building demolished. It's, yeah, I don't want to see that building go away. It's an icon for the city. I would, like to, I would like for him to be here just to see where he was at. We'll find out. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he'll come to the plate after we, if someone wants to make a motion, or we can talk about it in another meeting too. I mean, I'll make that motion. I got to change. You make a motion. Yeah. To proceed. Do I have a second? Second. Burns. Who made the motion? Brian. Brian. Brian Burns yeah. seconded. All in favor? All against? Five and one passes. Okay, Andy, we'll just go ahead and proceed. And thank you, Casey Coles, for the record. Yes. Anything else, Casey? No, but no. Oh, you're good, Casey. Uh -huh.